Audio Jungle. Hello everyone, myself Narin Singh Maurya. So guys, uh, today we'll solve gate uh, 2014 jet propulsion problem and here we have a problem number 16, right? So the question is the match the appropriate engine, okay, in right column. So this is what uh, engine here, right column with the corresponding aircraft in left column. So here we have a corresponding uh, aircraft, all right, and this is the aircraft. All right, for most efficient performance of the engine. So here now we have to segregate that uh, uh, aircraft uh, related to the engine. So if we know the range of the you know Mach number based on that, we can say uh, that uh, uh, option A like low speed, high speed, okay, supersonic fighter and hypersonic. So that we can write. So here uh, I will write some like uh, see this point is basically if you know low speed i must write here low speed transport aircraft low speed transport aircraft so low speed means what like that mach number is what less okay and if you check the aircraft here turboprop ramjet turboprop turbojet turbofan here given okay and the second i will write i High subsonic, high subsonic civilian aircraft. Okay, civilian aircraft. Next, I can write supersonic fighter aircraft. Supersonic fighter. aircraft and what is the third third is hypersonic aircraft uh, fourth one is last hypersonic hypersonic aircraft so i'll write here with respect to mach number hypersonic means what mach is what greater than 5.0 supersonic fighter aircraft means what here, if Mach number is greater than 1 or sometimes greater than 1.2, then it is called supersonic fighter. More than 1 Mach number, it, it comes under supersonic. But generally, we will take 1.2. 1 more than 1.2 Mach numbers comes under uh, supersonic category. I mean, more than 1.2, it is 1.6, 2, 3, 4, 5. Till that it is supersonic and more than 5 it comes under hypersonic aircraft. All right. Here they have given high subsonic civilian aircraft. So high, see like Mach number below 1 will be subsonic. But if, if they say like high subsonic, so if Mach is what greater than 0.6. Okay. This is the range basically. This is the range if Mach comes, Mach number greater than 0.6, it comes under high subsonic civilian aircraft. Uh, and the low speed transport means that M is what? Mach number is what? Less than 0 0.6 or uh, you know generally 0 0.5. This comes under low speed transport aircraft. Okay. Alright. So based on this that aircraft is what decided. So now like for ramjet because in ramjet we don't have any rotatory part. So that uh, ramjet engine will work for the hypersonic means because option they have given ramjet turboprop turbojet turbofan in turboprop you know we have a propeller right we have a propeller this is the propeller hmm? turboprop okay this is what propeller here huh? and this is here now engine we have huh? like this this is what turboprop yes or no this is what turboprop so in this turboprop this propeller Obviously, this propeller because of some uh, aerodynamic losses like stalling and all occurs if the speed is what more. All right. So that turbo turboprop engine will not work for very higher Mach number. So that comes under low speed. 
तो मीन्स लो स्पीड ट्रांसपोर्ट एयरक्राफ्ट कम्स अंडर टर्बो प्रॉप दैट 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 पॉइंट इज नॉट वेरी क्लियर इट टोटली रिलेटेड टू मैक नंबर बिकॉज इफ प्रोपेलर दिस इज वॉट प्रोपेलर एंड प्रोपेलर इफ इफ इट विल रोटेट विथ वेरी हाई स्पीड देन देर विल बी द एरोडाइनमिक लॉसेज लाइक स्टॉलिंग दैट फ्लो विल बी सेपरेटेड ओवर द प्रोपेलर ब्लेड so for that reason uh, turbo prop engine will not uh, go for very high speed it will not uh, uh, it cannot work for very high speed because of the losses aerodynamic losses all right so that's the reason mac number will be less so this low speed comes under turbo prop i must write here turbo prop it is very clear okay high subsonic civilian aircraft supersonic and hypersonic so hypersonic means it is greater than max 5 so means there is no limitation it can go max more than max 5 it means 6 7 8 9 10 it can go so obviously there will be rotatory part even compressor or turbine any rotatory part will be there then for this particular speed more than 5 mach number it will be very difficult to work okay so it will go for the ramjet because we ramjet we don't have any rotatory part so it is totally free free of any kind of losses so that uh, ramjet hypersonic aircraft you can mention here hypersonic aircraft here ramjet is what appropriate here as per given option now again we have uh, see ramjet is what done turbo prop is done now we have turbojet and turbo fan so turbojet basically work for the high subsonic civilian aircraft in fact it work it will work for the fighter aircraft also uh sorry this supersonic fighter aircraft this will be related to the turbojet why i said this uh, uh because in turbojet like in turbofan in turbofan also there is the fan okay in turbofan also there is fan but that fan is what inside the coupling that fan will divide to the stream in cold and hot air so that we can get more propulsive efficiency for that reason only we are doing and so that we can reduce the noise also that is the advantages of the turbofan right Uh, so with the help of fan we can divide the stream so we'll get cold air and hot air so that we can increase propulsive efficiency so that we can uh, decrease the noises and, and all but turbojet will have a more noise but it can it it can fly with very higher altitude and with very high speed okay so this turbojet is what here option we have only two engines two engines we have turbojet and turbofan and we have this two option okay two option so here you can check supersonic fighter aircraft it will go turbojet all right because this turbojet will do will not have any fan and also it is also free to you know like fly with supersonic speed also because if it will go for supersonic speed so like a uh, shock formation and uh, everything will come okay you know that losses and all supersonic a uh, flow that uh, mac number greater than 1 means supersonic flow and obviously there will be the shock formation okay maybe uh, normal shock or oblique uh, oblique shock formation but because of that there will be losses also at the same time all right so uh, this turbojet Uh, will be uh, working for supersonic fighter aircraft so supersonic fighter aircraft means it is turbojet all right so this uh, like range mach number range i have given so that easily you can recognize and high high subsonic civilian aircraft means turbo so based on this you can mark this huh? low speed a turbo prop means uh, high subsonic means b and turbofan means 4 okay so check a2 b4 a2 b4 is yes or no? so this is the correct answer even di d means hypersonic i means ramjet so yes hypersonic ramjet you already have written so what is the correct answer answer is d so in this way you can get the correct answer okay next now this is problem number 17 okay for a given fuel flow rate and thermal efficiency the take off thrust for a gas turbine engine burning aviation turbine fuel considering fuel air ratio f less than 1 is so what they are asking take off thrust for a gas turbine engine okay so now for uh,
Okay, so this is what flow. Great. Just hold on. Okay. So we have flow inlet and flow exit. This is what combustion chamber, this is compressor, this is turbine, and here we have a combustion chamber. In combustion chamber, we are injecting fuel. Here we have a air intake, and this is the exit. So obviously M dot A plus M dot F. This is the exit. What is the exit velocity here? V E and what is the inlet velocity here? V in infinite. So if you'll check the thrust, all right. They are asking take off thrust. So thrust, if you talk, we'll have a momentum thrust. Plus pressure thrust. All right. If they are talking about takeoff thrust, okay. So that's the function of momentum thrust first. Okay. So takeoff thrust means momentum thrust. Momentum. Thrust means mass into velocity will be the momentum. Okay, so means mass final mass m dot a plus m dot f into exit final exit mass flow rate into exit velocity minus initial mass flow rate, flow rate into initial velocity means air intake. So here you can get m dot a plus uh, m dot f okay v e minus m dot a infinite what you can get here you can write m dot a common so here you will get one plus m dot f divided by m dot a okay v exit and uh, m dot a v infinite you can write m dot a okay and here one plus m dot f what is the m dot f by m dot a this is the fuel air ratio f by a which is denoted by small a yes or no so it is a small a v e minus i can write uh, this the uh, whole bracket so it is v in final now this is the thrust all right now we'll check so they are talking uh, directly proportional to exhaust velocity, inversely proportional to exhaust velocity, independent of exhaust velocity, directly proportional to square of exhaust velocity. So if you check the formula of the thrust, so exhaust velocity is what? This is the exhaust velocity. So thrust is what? Directly proportional to exhaust velocity or not? Yes, it is directly proportional to exhaust velocity. So what is your correct answer? Check. Directly proportional to exhaust velocity, which is option E. Yes or no? Which is the option? This is the answer. All right. Next, this is the <coughs> problem number twenty. Okay, the thrust produced by turbojet engine. Okay. So again, just uh, before only I had uh, written the formula for the thrust. So I'll draw the diagram. Check. Okay, this is the air intake M dot A. This is the air exit. Here, combustion chamber we have. So, M dot F, we are injecting the fuel, compressor, combustion chamber, turbine. So, what will be the air M dot A plus M dot F? And here, exit velocity, and this is what inlet velocity. So, what is the thrust formula you have written? It is nothing but M dot A 
in bracket 1 plus f v e minus v infinity what is the f it is fuel to air ratio m dot f by m dot called fuel to air ratio okay here i must say this is the atmosphere air enters so point 0.1 this is 0.2, this is 0.3, this is 0.4, and this is what x. All right, I'll draw the diagram so that problem will be very easy for you to understand this. Because this question is simple one, but the thing is you should understand the concept. Okay, this is what a one. 2, not 3, not 4, not 4 dash, pi into pi dash, or you just say this is the exit also. This point is exit, pi 4 or phi or exit, you can say. Okay. Because they have said turbo jet engine, so I have drawn the turbo jet engine and all the steps I have explained. Now we'll go for the statement increasing the thrust of the turbo jet engine increases with increasing compression pressure ratio decreases with increasing compression ratio remains constant with increasing compression pressure so first increases and then decreases with increasing compression uh, ratio that is the question okay like first we need to understand that how that thrust is what related to the compression pressure ratio that is the very important point that we need to understand so I have written here thrust formula. Okay, what is the thrust? Thrust is m dot a. To so try to understand it is very easy conceptual question. V e minus v infinity. Okay, first of all, you you have seen this thrust is the function of basically v e means function of exhaust velocity. Exhaust velocity more more thrust. Exhaust velocity. Okay. Thrust is the function of exhaust velocity and exhaust velocity of what? Exhaust velocity of nozzle. Yes or no? So, this exhaust velocity of nozzle, if this is what nozzle check, if this is what nozzle, okay. So, exhaust velocity of nozzle, suppose here we have temperature Te and this is the temperature T naught E, this point I am saying. This is what nozzle. That's the reason I have drawn. So, what is the exhaust velocity? Generally, exhaust velocity I can write 2 Cp T naught E minus T. This is the formula of the exhaust velocity. So, exhaust velocity depends on T naught E. Where is the T naught E? It is the total exhaust temperature. So, if T naught E will be high, if you want V E exhaust velocity high, then you should have a T naught E high. Try to understand. If you are having if you want T naught E high, then you should have a T naught 4 high. If you want T naught 4 high, then you should have a T naught 3 high. Okay. If you want T naught 3 high, then you should have a T naught 2 high. Okay. If you take this is what intake, this is intake, this is what compressor. So now it is very clear like if you want exhaust velocity high so you should have a t naught 2 high what is t naught 2 it is the compressor temperature so it is very clear now compressor pressure ratio what is the compressor pressure ratio it is t naught 2 by t naught 1 so if this compressor pressure ratio if you want high then this t naught 2 should be high okay and this t naught 2 if, if high then t naught 3 will be high t naught 3 high means t naught 4 high t naught 4 high means t naught e high if t naught e is high it means exhaust velocity will be high maximum value or higher value so it is very clear like thrust is what depending on compressor pressure ratio how it is depending if you are increasing compressor pressure ratio then th then thrust will be increasing why because compressor pressure ratio increasing means t naught 2 increasing t naught 2 increasing means t naught 3 increasing t naught 3 increasing means t naught 4 then similarly t naught e and finally v, v exhaust velocity will be increasing once exhaust velocity will be increasing your thrust will be increasing that is clear but up to what limit that is uh, that is okay it means increasing means it doesn't mean you can increase up to beyond the limit no because compressor is a rotatory part so that compressor will have some limitation 
like uh, that compressor should not surge that compressor should not stall that compressor should not uh, fail because it is not like if you are uh, with the help of compressor you are increasing pressure and temperature so you can increase that pressure and temperature up to like beyond the limit no there is certain limit after that what will happen that compressor will be failed there will have a stalling and surging because of stalling and surging that compressor will give reverse result uh, earlier it was one once pressure ratio was increasing th th thrust was increasing but reverse effect means reverse effect means then still if compressor pressure ratio you will be increasing beyond the limit then thrust will be decreasing that is because of the losses in compressor what are the losses stalling and surging basically surging so because of surging there will be loss in compressor okay again in turbo machine i will turbo machine the chapter i will explain what is the surging here i am just saying i am using this term that means loss in compressor if more and more pressure ratio if you will increase then this pressure ratio will be the function of surging also okay means there is some limitation if rp you are increasing then after certain time surging will occur surging means losses will occur losses means that compressor will be filled then thrust will be decreasing so first increasing then decreasing hope you understood so that's the reason first increases and then decreases with increasing compressor if you are continuously increasing compressor pressure ratio then first thrust will be increasing that is true and then it will be decreasing this is this is why because of surging surging in compressor surging means losses that is the breakdown of flow in compressor so losses so what is correct answer option d hope you understood so your answer is i must write here your answer is all right hope you understood now we'll go for next check this is problem number 45 a cruise missile with an ideal ramjet is flying at mach 4 at an altitude where the ambient temperature 100 kelvin consider uh, uh, consider a ratio of a specific heat gamma 1.4 and a specific gas constant r27 if the stagnation temperature in the combustion chamber is equal to 2310k the speed of exhaust gases. All right. So this is what ideal ramp that. In previous like 2020, 2020, 2022, I have explained well what is the ideal ramp that. Okay. So you know that ideal ramp that uh, condition. What is the ideal ramp that condition? If they said ideal, ideal means there should not be any losses. Any losses means uh, I will draw the diagram so it will be more clear. Okay. This is what is spike. So flow will be entering. Okay. Now <clears throat> here this is the flow. Okay. Generally, if it is not ideal it is actual uh, ramjet engine then because of this spike you may have a oblique shock here oblique shock okay this is oblique shock in actual uh, actual but this is what ideal so there will not be any oblique shock here that's the reason i have given dotted so easily you can understand now this is what up to here to here this is the combustion chamber and this is what nozzle okay this is the exit okay and here we have inlet so this inlet will be divided in two parts this is the supersonic this is supersonic and this is what subsonic inlet like diffuser okay and this is what combustion chamber hmm? combustion chamber the CC and this is what nozzle. All right. So obviously this nozzle we have will have a 
ram jet so obviously this exit is will be greater than one because it is ram jet so it will have a uh, supersonic mach number and uh, here we have a m infinity okay ram jet is what flying with mach 4 so obviously it will also be a supersonic mach number so i must give the point this is point a this is point one this is point uh, uh, i must say here this is the point one and this is point two this is point three this is what point four all right color need to change here so it will be more clear okay so here at this station what will be the total temperature t naught a what is the total pressure p naught a at this station okay at this station what is the total temperature t naught 2 what is the total pressure p naught at this station what is the total temperature t naught 3 and what is the total pressure p naught 3 similarly here this is what t naught 4 and p naught 4 this is also called t naught e because it is it and this is p naught e See, if i say ideal So ideal ramjet means no losses. So means total pressure must be same. P not A is equal to P not A is equal to P not one is equal to P not two, P not three, P not four, and this is also P not. Similarly, total temperature must be also same. Okay. P not two. T naught 2 does not is equal to T naught 3. I will show you the diagram so it will be more clear. And T naught 3 is equal to T naught 4 is equal to T naught. T naught E. Why this is? Because T naught 2 here, this is important. T naught 2 and T naught 3, you are adding fuel, combustion chamber. No? I will show the diagram adding fuel because it is a combustion chamber see two to three so this is what combustion chambers you are adding fuel here m dot f you are burning fuel here so obviously temperature will not be same but pressure will be same because it is the ideal okay all right so they have given stagnation temperature in combustion chamber equal to t naught so this value they have given here oh all right so this is what temperature so combustion chamber temperature you can say t naught 3 or t naught 4 or t naught e it is equal to same so basically this temperature they have given to you how much they have given 2310 they have given 2310 kelvin all right mach number they have given and they have given altitude where the ambient temperature is 100 kelvin ambient temperature they have given ta not total temperature ambient temperature 100 kelvin they have given and uh, now they are asking the speed of exhaust gases. So exhaust gases speed they are asking. What is the exhaust <coughs> gases speed? Let me see, calculate. Uh, exhaust uh, speed of exhaust gases means VE they are asking. VE they are asking. What is the ideal ramjet? This is the ideal ramjet and one very important ideal ramjet means M A is equal to M E. Exit Mach number is equal to exit Mach number is equal to inlet Mach number. That is the ideal ramjet. This is the condition already I have explained many times. So whatever the Mach number at exit and inlet that must be same. All right. Now so <laughs> that point you have because you know what is the total temperature or what is the total enthalpy okay what is the total enthalpy at exit because at exit you need to calculate velocity so that's the reason i'm writing total enthalpy at exit h naught e is equal to static enthalpy h e yes or no plus exit velocity square by 2 this is the formula for the enthalpy or in terms of temperature you can write Cp T naught E is equal to Cp T E plus V square by 2 or it is T naught is equal to T E plus V e square by 2 Cp. What is the Cp? 
gamma r upon gamma minus 1. All right. Anyway, so if you want to calculate V e, so what is the V e? It is nothing but 2 C p C naught e minus P. E. This is the formula. So <coughs> what is the T naught e and T e? So check T naught e they have given to you. What is T naught e? 2, 3, 1, 0 Kelvin they have given. And can we calculate T e? Yes, we can calculate isentropic relation. What is the isentropic relation T naught E by T E is equal to 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 M E square. And you know M E is the exit Mach number that will be equal to M infinity, okay, or M A aircraft Mach number which is given how much? It is given, check, it is given 4. So, 4 it is given. Now we can calculate. So, what will be the TE? TE will be T naught E divided by 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2. Square. What is the T naught E check? It is 2310. 2310 divided by 1 plus gamma they have given to you. How much? Gamma they have given 1.4, see R they have given 287. So 1.4. All right. 1.4 minus 1 divided by 2. Mach number they have given 4 the square. Let me calculate. What is TE? Just give me time. It is 1.4 minus 1. 1.4 minus 1 divided by 2 into 4 square okay 1 plus this <coughs> 2 3 1 0 divided by this square 550 exactly this is the te now this te and t naught e you keep here ve value so we'll write ve is nothing but 2 cp T naught e minus TE. We will write 2 CP. What is the CP? Gamma R gamma minus 1 in bracket T naught E. We will write all the value here. Check 2 gamma is 1.4 R 287 divide by 1.4 minus 1 t not 3 what is t not 3 or t not e 2310 2 3 minus 550 and this is nothing but rho so we'll calculate this way so <coughs> we'll do this okay 0.4 into 287 divided by 0 0.4 into 2 into in bracket 2310 minus 550 okay we'll take root of it it's 1880 it is 1880 point be it meter per second or approximate you can say at 18 80 meter per second this is what your answer check this fill in the blank so you can keep here it is 18 80 point create it is already in meter per second so you just enter the uh, number value you have to enter that's all 1880.38 meter per second that's all this is your answer all right hope you understood this now this is the another question get 2014 okay and uh, here <coughs> this is the problem number 49 if you check an aircraft is flying at mach 3.0 at an altitude where the ambient pressure and temperature are 
50 kPa and 200 Kelvin. So we'll write given data first. Okay. That aircraft is not flying with Mach number M infinity, or you can say M A. It is nothing but 3.0. Ambient pressure they have given P A. How much? It is uh, 50 kPa and temperature ambient temperature T A. They have given how much? Remember ambient temperature always is static value. Okay, static pressure, static temperature. If the Converging diverging diffuser of the engine considering isentropic uh, with ratio of a specific heat gamma they have given how much 1.4 R they have given 287 joule per kg Kelvin float area they have given for the converging diverging diffuser how much it is uh, 0 0.05 meter square okay they are asking mass flow rate through the engine is this is the question now so <clears throat> they have said this is what uh, okay aircraft is what flying and this is obviously this is what jet engine they have mentioned this is jet engine this is what diffuser uh, this is the jet engine basically compressor combustion chamber and turbine and this is what nozzle okay we have a exit here what they have said converging diverging diffuser read this statement diffuser so this this is what diffuser what is the mean of diffuser diffuser mean this will read the flow This is what converging. This is the converging part, and this is the diverging part. So here, Mach number they have said it is three. That flow is what entering with Mach number three point zero. But this diffuser will decelerate the flow, and they are saying here it is m is less than one. Then what? Then only it will be a, a diffuser. Doesn't mean less than one always not required. But yes, be, because here it is the ideal diffuser okay and uh, isentropic there is no losses so that that's the mean of diffuser okay because here mac is what supersonic three so here it should be subsonic so less than one subsonic and here we have this part will be supersonic what what will happen at the throat throat will be m is equal to one understood or not so now i will show you converging part and this is what diverging part okay this is called cd diffuser converging diverging diffuser and this is also converging diverging part but I am saying here this is what CD nozzle. Why? Because nozzle means what? To accelerate the flow. So obviously this acceleration of the flow and CD nozzle. Uh, so whatever the Mach number here, this Mach number, suppose this is what Mach, uh, Mach is what 2. I am just writing here. Doesn't matter it is always 2. It can be supersonic, it can be subsonic. But my point is what? You just uh, just uh, like a two difference I want to show you. Suppose Mach here it is 2 okay this is mag number is what two so this is nozzle hence this this should be greater than two okay this is what diffuser so it will decelerate the flow here they have given mag number how much they have given three check they have given three is three so so here this mag number uh, whatever it this mag number this mag number will be less than uh, 3 or because here this is the throat also okay this is the throat also so it is like uh, that's the point comes uh, like why converging and diverging uh, nozzle or diffuser so there is one point because this is the convergent part okay so this convergent part will uh, decelerate the flow because here we have a supersonic 
So this is now diffuser, so it will diffuse the flow. So this MAC3 will reduce, 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 and at the throat it will be it will be one. Then here whatever the flow will be less than one. All right. Now what about this two MAC to more clearance? I'll 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 take this because both are supersonic now so i i will not give both supersonic because this is the supersonic so i will say this is the subsonic then uh, it will be more clear okay i will say this is the uh, like a uh, 0.6 now it is clear subsonic this is what supersonic then it will more clear here and this is here you are getting subsonic and here we are giving subsonic so here you will get greater than one i must say this is greater than one means here it is supersonic that is the nozzle cd nozzle the, now that that mean is what clear like why converging and why not only converging part why not only divergent part why both so both is required when you want to convert supersonic to subsonic or subsonic to supersonic then both uh, part required at the same time convergent as well as divergent hope you understood now so in this case also if it is 0.6 and it is going to get uh, greater than one means supersonic so here this is the throat which is minimum area and here that mic will be because from 0.6 uh, 0.6 to uh, directly 0.6 directly you cannot get uh, uh, two mac number or one mac number in between there is a one if i am saying this is the more clearance another because this is the example i am not solving the problem i am just uh, giving the example so that it is should be very clear i must say this is supersonic so supersonic means i say now this is two so 0 0.6 to 2 how you are getting 0 0.6 to 2 in between somewhere there is the one where is the one at minimum area this is called throat in very short i have explain that uh, cd nozzle okay anyway so it is very clear if throat is what minimum uh, minimum area in cd nozzle called throat Mini minimum area in cd nozzle or diffuser doesn't matter it is nozzle or diffuser both what will be mic mic will be one and uh, minimum area okay called called throat called throat and m is equal to one if i am saying m is equal to one then it is called choked condition what it is called choked condition at choked condition what will happen maximum mass flow rate maximum mass flow rate okay so here always remember doesn't matter it is nozzle or it is a diffuser so at the throat this is what throat this is what throat throat area ath if it, it is choked then it will be denoted by a star and obviously it will be choked because flow is what going to change from three to diffuser diffuser means subsonic okay so it is going to diffuse the flow all right so inlet is what supersonic so obviously it will be exi exit will be subsonic so in between there is the mac one it means choked flow choked flow means uh, throat area will be a star 0 0.05 it is 0 0.05 it is given okay here they have given mac. all right so all the value they have given to you now you can calculate because what is the formula so i will write formula non maximum mass flow rate formula no? maximum mass flow rate because it is choked flow so it will be the maximum mass flow rate here i have written the condition also maximum mass flow rate okay? non dimensional formula i will write formula directly not going to derive non dimensional form okay non dimensional please remember this because question they are asking based on this formula okay non dimensional what is the formula m max divided by a star okay root t naught e divided by 
P naughty, where is the T naughty and P naughty this? Okay. R by gamma is equal to 2 upon gamma plus 1. This is the formula you need to remember. This is the remark point, okay? This formula you need to remember. Derivation is there, but here I am not going to derive. You need to remember. So, what is the T naughty? You know the formula because it is ideal. Isentropic they have said so 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m. Uh, it is ideal or uh, you can write T naught A by better no? because it is ideal. So, this temperature will be same. No? T naught A by T A is equal to T naught A by T. So, here 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2. All right. So, what is the T naught A? T naught A or T naught A? It is 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m a square. What is the temperature they have given us? They have given us 200 Kelvin and Mach number 3. Huh? 200 Kelvin, 1 plus gamma they have given 1.4 minus 1 by 2. Mach number is given 3 square. So, what is the T naught value? T naught a or T naught? Let me calculate. Here I am getting weight 200, 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2, 3 square. So this value I am getting 560 Kelvin. Similarly, you can calculate P naught A by P A. That will also be same throughout the term. Uh, a nozzle because it is isentropic they have clearly mentioned okay and we are talking about the nozzle only uh, so don't think it is inside the engine so temperature total temperature and total pressure not going to change i am talking about this portion only okay there should not be any confusion this is the portion we are talking so no heat addition obviously total temperature and total pressure will be same so this is nothing but one plus gamma one, one by two m square to whole power gamma upon gamma minus 1. So, if I calculate what is the P naught total temperature, it is P A 1 plus gamma upon gamma minus 1. No? What is P A they have given to us? 50 kPa. So, I will write here, it is 50 kPa. 1 plus here. Let me calculate 1 plus 1.4 minus 1 by 2 into 3 square whole square 1.4 divided by 1.4 minus 1 into 50. It is nothing but 1836 63 AP. Okay. Check the formula. This is the formula. Now use this formula. So, what will be the formula here? I must write M dot max or M dot is equal to Check this formula, it is take all the value this side. So it is a star. Let me write. A star into E naught E gamma by R. Upon 
okay what is the a star value a star is 0 0.05 we'll write all the value here dear 0 0.05 just now you have calculated in my calculator it is uh, p naught e one eight p six point six three ten to the power three okay into gamma one point four divided by two eighty seven t naught e what is the t naught e or T naught is 560. 2 upon 1.4 so whole power 0.4 plus 1 divided by 1.4. Or M dot. Let me use calculator. 2 upon gamma plus 1 root 2 upon 1.4 plus 1 to whole power 1.4 plus 1 divided by 1.4 minus 1 root into 1.4 divided by 27 root into into p naught e 1836.63 into 88 0.05 divided by root of T naught which is 560. Okay. So I am getting here 156.84 kg per second. Check. 156. Here yeah, this is your answer. What is the correct answer? There is T. Okay. I hope you all understand this now. This is the formula based only problem. So I, I will suggest you, you just remember this non-dimensional formula. This is very, very important. Okay. Here I told you, this is the remark point I have given. You remember it. Okay? Remember always. This is non-dimensional. When, when flow is what choked. All right. So hope you all understand this. Any doubt if you get, then you write comment on comment box. Like and subscribe the channel. Keep doing hard work. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks so much.